Today, we're going to go over the world's smallest interchangeable lens cameras that you can just stick in your pocket for traveling and hiking. We're going to have some fun today. As you know, I am obsessed with small, cute little travel cameras that take up no space and they don't weigh anything, but you can change the lenses on them and that's kind of the key. I want a viewfinder if possible and I want to be able to change the lens so I can get that depth of field. So these are the cameras that I've been collecting. I've already gone over them in a few other videos, but I just got to bring it up again because this is what I when I just walk around and I want to have a small thing in my camera bag, this is what I use. So here's my favorite ones. The most smallest interchangeable lens camera in the world is this one here. It is a, uh, I have got, I've got one, two, uh, three, four of them. It's a Panasonic Lumix GM1. This is actually a lens. This is called a body cap lens. It's as flat as a lens cap. This is actually a lens. Here's some pictures taken with body cap lenses. I made a video about them if you're interested. It turned out pretty good. They're called body cap lenses because they're the size of a camera body cap or lens cap. Look at the quality. It's amazing how sharp they are. I have a nine millimeter and a 15 millimeter. These little things amaze me. Seeing these pictures, you wouldn't know they were taken by something as flat and small as a lens cap. And you can adjust the focus on them with a little lever that's at the bottom. So you can literally fit a Micro Four Thirds camera in your pocket with a lens attached if you use body cap lenses. This is a wonderful camera. It's 16 megapixels. It's Micro Four Thirds, which is a really good size sensor. Here's some pictures taken with the GM1. This is the smallest interchangeable lens camera in the world. Smaller than the Pen F and all the other cameras, this is the smallest one. And look at the quality. This camera is the size of a deck of cards. You can easily fit this in your pocket, no problem. And look at the quality of the pictures you can take. Here's some video I've taken with the GM1. It looks amazing. No, it doesn't have a mic jack. Most of these cameras don't. I mean, come on. I always record my audio separate anyway, no matter what camera I'm using. But look at the quality of the video. Again, this is Micro Four Thirds and you can use any Micro Four Thirds lens. This one does not have a viewfinder. This one does. This is the GM5. And again, the lens comes off. So you can put whatever Micro Four Thirds lens you want on there. Here's the viewfinder. It's actually not that bad. And this is a great little camera. It came out in 2014. It's only 211 grams, 16 megapixels, and it's by far the smallest Micro Four Thirds camera in the world with an EVF. It has a hot shoe, so you can actually do off-camera flash with this thing. It's so small and lightweight, and you can use any Micro Four Thirds lens with this. This is just a great camera. Here's some pictures I've taken with it. I've taken this to Europe on my European vacation. It's so small, it totally looks and feels like like a toy. And here's some video taken with the GM5. The GM1 can do 30 frames per second, but the GM5 can do 60, which gives the video a three-dimensional hyper-real feel. It's a little cinematic and surprisingly good, especially considering this looks like a little plastic toy from the 60s. Again, here's the GM1. This is the same camera, but without a viewfinder, so it weighs a little bit less, same dimensions. I mean, literally, look how small this is. This is the size of a pocket camera. And uh, this, what lens is this? This is another pancake lens. This is a nine millimeter. I did a video on pancake lenses. Here's another one that I have. And then the next step up from that would be the GX850. This one here has a flip up lens. These ones don't. And look at this footage shot with the GX850. Now it doesn't have stabilization or a mic jack. None of the cameras so far do, but you can still get some amazing footage with these little things. Just stick it on a tripod and you can get some great looking stuff. My favorite Micro Four Thirds lens is the little Olympus 45 1.8. It's the perfect little travel size portrait lens that gives you that creamy telephoto look with a blurry background and compression. Look how clean the footage can look under the right conditions. Autofocus isn't that great, but if you stay in the middle of the picture and don't move around too much, it can look really good. It also has kind of a cinematic look. I've used it in quite a few of my videos and travels. Last year I took it to my mom's farm in Kentucky and I used a couple of GX850s to make one of Kara's fitness videos. Look at the footage. The look is amazing. I used a Sigma 56 1.4, a great lens for stuff like this. Micro Four Thirds is great for traveling and keeping everything small and lightweight. These earlier cameras are much smaller than the new Micro Four Thirds cameras that are the same size and weight now as full frame cameras. The whole point of Micro Four Thirds is to keep it small and light. 
The GX850 can also take really nice pictures and you can instantly switch back and forth between pictures and video. I took a lot of pictures in Europe with one of these along with my GM1 and GM5. These things are so small I took all three cameras. Not only are the pictures nice, but little cameras like this are just so much fun to use. You literally feel and look like a tourist. And you don't have to lug around big, heavy, annoying gear. And it's an interchangeable lens camera, Micro Four Thirds. They stopped making this a few years ago, but uh, this is a great, if you want to do selfies and stuff, this is a great, uh, similar size camera that you can use for that. These are Micro Four Thirds. The next step up from that is this one here. This is an Olympus. OMD EM10. This is a heavier camera. It's quite heavy. This also came out in 2014. It's 16 megapixels. It weighs almost 400 grams. The colors are great. It's not as intuitive to use as the Lumix cameras, but it's overflowing with features and the image quality is amazing. I was shocked how good the image quality is on this camera. Skin tones are absolutely perfect. It has nice dynamic range, a hot shoe so you can do off camera flash. It's only one 125th, but that doesn't stop me. I just use ND filters. And look how it makes everyday objects look amazing. It gives things a clarity and a quality that's just hard to describe. It's so sharp and it makes things look professional even with existing house lighting. I just love the look of these pictures and it has all these fun creative settings not just for pictures but also video where you can get all kinds of fun creative artsy looks and styles. Even a cartoony look great for music videos and stuff like that. <laughs> or you can take two pictures and have the camera put them together like this in the camera. It has a nice button on top that brings up the ISO and the white balance. The front button changes the ISO and the rear button changes the white balance, which is great. It does have image shift stabilization. That's probably why it's so heavy. It has a pretty good EVF. It's a little funky when you're outdoors, but it has an EVF. The downside is the picture taking is kind of slow. It's not very responsive from the time you press the button to when you actually see the picture that you took and then you have to wait a couple seconds till you actually see what you got. So you can't really do fast successive pictures. Maximum sh mechanical shutter speed is 1 4,000th and maximum flash sync speed is only 1 1 25th. All right, so moving on, now we go up to the next step up from there. This is the Lumix newer version of, a, of the Micro Four Thirds camera, smallest one that uh, you can get. G100, this is the Panasonic Lumix G100. This does have a selfie screen. This is the newest technology. It does have electronic uh, stable Stabilization. The viewfinder is pretty good. Interchangeable lens. And again, Olympus and Lumix cameras are totally interchangeable with lenses. This is the smallest of the new Micro Four Thirds cameras. It has 4K, mic input, electronic stabilization, a flip out screen, a hot shoe, good face recognition, good dynamic range control. It shoots raw, has HDMI output. It can do 120 frames per second slow motion and all the features you'd want in a new camera. Picture quality is wonderful, the viewfinder is good, and it's all packed in a very small little camera body that looks and feels like a miniature full-size camera. I've used it in several of my YouTube videos. Look at the quality of this footage. Look how sharp that looks. Let's stop the footage and look at a still frame of the video. It's good enough to be used as a picture. And this is just 1080p, it also does 4K. Look at this footage, it looks three-dimensional, especially when it's 60p. It's so good, some people think my background is green screened in, but it's not. I love the three-dimensional look of all this footage. And this is all in a very, very small little package. The G100 is great for both pictures and video. So you can go back and forth between either. Camera is actually smaller than it looks. It's really not that big. And the stuff that it shoots is just really, really nice. It looks great. Simple, intuitive layout, real easy white balance on this thing. That's what I like about Lumix cameras. It has a white balance button right here. You just click that and you instantly white balance. It's so easy to get to. It has a flip out screen, like I said, for, it does do 4K, it does 4K 30, 1080, 60, and it even does 1080 up to 120 frames per second. Has electronic stabilization. It does have a microphone port. And this is the only camera, all of these, that actually has live HDMI out. So you can record on an external recorder and you can see what you're getting live through an HDMI out on this thing. All right, next up, we get to the APS-C cameras. These are, look at this, it's almost the same size as the G100 and it doesn't need the lump on top to have a viewfinder. This is the Sony 6300 APS-C, a really nice, small, lightweight, hand-sized camera. I've taken so many pictures with the 6300 over the years. It has a hot shoe, so a lot of the pictures were taken 
working with an AD200 as my off-camera flash. It has a mic jack, but no image stabilization. Autofocus isn't as good as the newer cameras, but I love, love, love how small and lightweight this thing is in my hand. It doesn't feel like a chore to carry it around. My favorite lenses are the Sigma 56 1.4 and Sigma 30 1.4. The kit lens is pretty good also. Look at these pictures taken with a 16 to 50 kit lens. They look like fun, colorful pictures right out of a magazine. And look at the video quality. It doesn't have that clinical, overly sharp look of full frame stuff. And the skin tones are better than the newer Sony's. I like it better than the new ZV cameras because it has a viewfinder. I hope they can get APS-C cameras small again like this one with a viewfinder, a hot shoe, stabilization, and eye autofocus. I just can't let the 6300 go. It's like the perfect size and weight. The 6300 is smaller than the 6400, the 6500, 6600. This is my favorite of the... Uh, uh, Actually, this one is my favorite. This is this. This one here is the 5100. This is one of the first ones that started it all. Look how small this is. APS-C Sony. The footage is a little softer because it's an older Kodak. It doesn't have a viewfinder or a hot shoe or stabilization or a mic input, but it's just so damn small and lovable. And the flip up screen is my favorite more than the flip out sideways screen. As APS-C cameras go, this thing is tiny. It's the smallest in the world with a Sony E-mount. So if you wanted, you could even put giant professional lenses on it. Another thing this camera has that no other Sony APS-C camera has is the SD card slot is on the side, not underneath. Look at the small lenses you can get. That's a 20 millimeter 2.8 on there. Really, really nice. I love this camera. And then there's the Canon M200. This is kind of like the Sony 5100. Has a flip up screen. It's a little bigger than the 5100 and noticeably heavier. I like the 5100 better than the Canon. But you can fit the M200 camera body in your pocket. I like the picture quality of the 5100 better too. If you want the most lightweight, <laughs> literally size of a deck of cards camera like this, this is the size of a deck of cards, right? This is a Samsung NX Mini. I love these cameras so much. I've got one, two, three, four. And yes, this is an interchangeable lens camera. Uh, where, where's the lens here? This, believe it or not, the lens comes off. It's a one inch sensor. And not only that, it's a 20 megapixel one, one inch sensor. 20 megapixels. These, uh, these uh, um, micro four thirds are only 16 megapixels. This is 20 megapixels, one inch sensor. The lenses are great. This is a nine millimeter. This is a seven, what is this? This is a zoom lens. Um, this one is a 17 millimeter. It takes nice pictures. Here's a picture taken with it, and here's another one. But look at the video this thing takes. This is video footage taken with the NX Mini. It's only 1080p, but look at this. Even when you take stills from the video footage, it looks like professional photos. Look at these. And these are just stills from 1080p footage. So here's a picture of an NX Mini taken with another NX Mini. I shot a whole YouTube video using nothing but NX Minis. This is the quality. All this video footage you're seeing right now was shot with an NX Mini. This is one of the lenses that goes on the NX Mini. This is the 9mm f3.5. Look at how tiny this thing is. Here it is on the camera. I mean, literally, you can fit this camera in your pocket with the lens on it. Here's some footage using the little 17 millimeter lens. Remember, this camera is the size of a credit card. Samsung should never have stopped making these things. And here's a nine millimeter lens. This lens is smaller than an Oreo cookie. There are even adapters where you can use other types of lenses. Here I'm using a big heavy Canon EF 50 millimeter 1.2 on this teeny tiny little camera. But the adapters are really hard to find nowadays. Even with the little tiny lenses it comes with, close-ups are super crisp. I love these little guys. Even with the lens on, these things totally fit in any pocket. I can't stop collecting these things. They don't make them obviously anymore. Samsung, as you know, makes smartphones now, but this has so many more features than a smartphone does. The menu is so fun to use. It has face detection focus. It can shoot raw. One six thousandth of a second mechanical shutter with this little thing. That's pretty amazing. So though, here we go with some of the smallest, most lightweight. Now I know there's other ones. There's like the Pen F, you know, stuff like that. But these are my favorite ones of everything that's out there. Uh, I, I've got numerous versions of them, as you can tell. I can't stop collecting these things. I'm obsessed with the small cameras that just don't take up space or weight. And the lenses are pretty small too. Even an APS-C Sony, like here's a, a kit lens. This is a, a good one. This is a 16 to 50, not very big. This is a 
16 millimeter 2.8. Look how small that is for APS-C. Here's another one is the 20 millimeter 2.8. So you can get small lenses for APS-C and of course Micro Four Thirds is really small and you can fit like four or five lenses in your camera bag along with the camera and a flash trigger. Some of these have hot shoes. That's really cool. So what did I have in my camera bag for the last two weeks that I kept teasing you with? Now I've already established in previous videos that I have three seven foot light stands in here that packed down incredibly small. So we've already established this. Then we established that I have three strobes in here that are smaller but more powerful than speed lights. The 8100s. Okay, so we got those. Now what's the camera and what's the lenses? You ready for this? Ah, here he is. Here we go. Here comes the flash trigger. The flash trigger is actually bigger than some of the lenses. It's an Olympus OMD EM10. There, the first lens is already on here. Every lens has an ND and a, a polarizing filter on it already, ready to go. This one is a 45 Olympus f1.8. It's my favorite portrait lens. Then we have a 56 millimeter Sigma, uh, uh, was a 1.4. That's a pretty, this is the biggest lens in here. So here's my Sigma 56 1.4. Then we have a, what is this? This is a 25. This is the Zhongyi 25 millimeter f.95, 0 0.95. That is pretty amazing. Then we have a, what is this? This is a Olympus 25 1.8. I love this lens. This is actually a really good lens, a 25 1.8. I label them so you can see what it is. And then I have this little tiny one here, the Leica 15 1.7. All right, so let's pack up the bag, put the camera in here, the four lenses. I even got room for more. One, two, three flash strobes, and my seven foot light stands in my camera bag, ready to journey across the world and have fun with my full photography kit. I hope you got something out of this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.